So today I'm gonna to be talking about how I was able to move on with my life after my diagnosis. This video or no video is meant to vilify the person who infected me. I don't hate this person. I've never hated this person. In fact, I have a lot of empathy for this person and I kind of pity this person because I truly, truly, truly felt the pain that this person was in living day by day the life that he was living so this is not to vilify him because at the end of the day i came out with so much more due to this situation due to that relationship i was able to really begin to love myself i knew that i was the only one responsible for the love that i craved thus i was able to attract a far greater love than i've ever received in my entire life I want you guys to know that everything happens for a reason. Anyway, back to my notes. So the first thing that I did to get on my journey to um, recovery and healing was leaving that relationship. Because although that relationship made me so much stronger than I ever thought I was capable of being, it was so toxic and it was very hard and it was very painful. And... Um, the healing was finally able to take root on something once i left that relationship so if you're in a situation let's say you're in an environment let's say at work or even living situations it's best to leave that environment first and foremost because it's really hard close to impossible to do the work if you're still around the same thing that's making you sick it's kind of counter um intuitive counterproductive so once i left the relationship my healing was finally able to take root in itself and that's when the work and the craziness really began i remember the first few days like i felt like i couldn't breathe i'm lying not the first few days oh my gosh when i first left this person i couldn't sleep by myself i would go to my friend's house every single day every single day and I would just and watch Rick and Morty and fall asleep at my friend's house because I couldn't sleep alone. I couldn't sleep alone. I felt like I would go into like shakes, cry. Like I just couldn't be alone. So um, that was number two. I was around people that I loved that weren't going to necessarily ask me questions and be nosy, but just accepted the place that I was at and loved me nonetheless. So that was super important don't isolate yourself i understand that it may seem like you're the only one that's going through whatever it is that you're going through but if there's people in your life that actually love you they don't need to know the details in order to be there for you it was really hard to leave this relationship not only was it hard because of the fact that i was leaving a relationship that i really wanted to be in but i was leaving a relationship that i thought was going to be the end all be all you know, this person infected me with HIV. Who else was I going to be with? I felt like I had no hope. And that's the way that he wanted it to be. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think that I had no hope. But damn, like, everything just happened so quickly. I felt like I was going through withdrawal symptoms. And honestly, when you think about it, when you go through a breakup, it is almost like breaking up with your drug, you know? Especially if you're in a toxic relationship, when you break up with that person... It is like you are breaking up with that toxic drug. Spend time with people that you love. You don't have to be around a whole bunch of people, but making sure that at least one or two people are there for you just so that they can share the burden. Because like I said, when you go through something traumatic, oftentimes you become very needy. And that's okay. You have to understand that is okay. In this culture, in this society, it's frowned upon when you mourn. It's frowned upon when you cry. It's frowned upon when you're sad. You literally cannot have any other emotions aside from happiness and I don't give a f When in reality, you do give many, many f What happens is, is that our nervous system is not able to relax. Sometimes we store the wound, the emotion of the wound in our nervous system, literally in our nervous system. So it's like having PTSD. That's literally what PTSD is. So basically when you go to the gym, when you work out, when you do anything like fast, like cardio brings your heart rate up, it's activating different parts of your nervous system. It's activating the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, and basically that's your fight, flight, or freeze 
um, reflex. Now, when you're done working out and you're ready to eat and you're hungry, I don't know if you find yourself hungry sometimes after a great workout, that is the parasympathetic nervous system. And that's telling your body that it's okay to relax. I had already been going to the gym before my diagnosis. I was at the gym literally five to six days a week. The first thing that I did actually, the day that I got diagnosed is I took my ass to the gym right after I left the clinic. And I cried at the gym. And my best friend was like, yo, get your shit together. You're alive. You're going to be alive. You're going to be good. You're going to be fine. You're going to move on. You know, you're a badass. You need to find somebody. My man is calling me. Hold on.